All right, Gary, what are we playing this week? Well, Cole, I went out and got us DNA tests. Ooh, scammy. <laughs> it's extremely scammy. I also uh, named a star after a duck feed, and we are lords in Scotland. Nice. Yeah. Because uh, we own a square foot of land. Hmm. Um, just did uh, all the scams and flams. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the reason why I did this is because I wanted to see what uh, the the uh, our children, you know, our progeny would do with duck feed. Like okay. Duck feed babies. And do they have markers for podcasting? Huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What the hell? What? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> of course they do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, so, so we'll use this uh, this DNA thing here. And uh, we'll turn on the game computer so it listens to us. Okay. You know, because that's that's part of the whole thing. And uh, I'm going to plug in some numbers here. Like, do it here. And let's see what uh, happens with uh, Duck Feed the Next Generation. Oh. Hey, Cole. Uh, it's me, Gary Jr. Uh, hi, I'm, Ga- I'm, uh, I'm Gary Jr. as well. <laughs> hey, that, yeah. that boy was lying about his fecundity. Oh, dad. Um, where's the, oh, there's a couple of cold juniors over there. Oh, huh? Yeah. Hey guys. Yeah. Hey, do you want to go play high silent hill five? <laughs> <laughs> silent hill five is terrible. Well, it's not terrible, but it's a pale imitator. <laughs> yeah. I'd agree. No, as a, as a, as a young Gary, the next generation, I care less about that and more about divinity original sin three. Mm. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's all go, uh, be duck feed the next generation. Yeah. Let's do. Oh, wait, game yeah. computer. A little, little lost. Yeah. That's all I had. It wasn't so much a randomization. I just wanted to pretend to be our sons. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I, I was a little bit slow on the uptake on that. No, you weren't. You were doing fine. I, it was my fault for not coming up with a randomization. <laughs> like, I just, just decided not to because I wanted to talk about this thing. Yeah. And I wanted to read the intro that I have for this episode because I found a good one that I missed. Okay. This is Gary Butterfield. This is Cole Ross. And this is Abdex Suffering, and it's poop past PP o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> I really like that. It's fun to be a child. I like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah it's, it's poop past PP o'clock. <laughs> um, the, uh, yeah, I love it. Yeah. Uh, this week we're talking about uh, Star Trek, the next generation futures past for the SNES. At least I believe that's mm-hmm. what we are. That's the only next generation yes. uh, game I could find for the SNES. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to, this is a Gary pick. Mm-hmm. Uh, two things. One, this was a game I rented over and over in a child as a child and never got. Okay. So I wanted an excuse to like play it again. And then two, uh, I, we hadn't talked about Star Trek in a while. True. Uh, and I was thinking about Star Trek, Star Trek, the next generation recently. Yeah. Uh, and wanted to talk about it. So that's really all I had. Uh, it's a real fucking weird game though. It is. Um, I normally associate, uh, something this, you know, PC style, um, with the Genesis, uh, when Mm -hmm. it comes to the, uh, the 16 bit consoles or whatever. Uh, boy, was I disappointed when I got to the, uh, to the away team section. I was like, Oh, this is (laughs) dog shit. (laughs) It's a little like the old, the, uh, old Ghostbusters arcade game from hell, but like really shitty. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's real bad. And the ship, ship to ship combat is also not good. It's a little uh, bit better. I mean, at least that like it, it is, um, you know, just asteroids or star flight kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, a little bit better. It's just the, the whole point of this game. The reason why this was so hard to understand as a kid is because it's a bunch of just little games stuck right. together. Like a star Trek game is difficult to do Yeah, uh, because star Trek is a mix of things. Uh, it's, it's not a very good video game like show. Mm -hmm. Um, so this just kind of tries to emulate all the different versions of it. Like all the hot diplomacy action. Like you, (laughs) you spend a lot of time with the droll thrills of like using the communicator, (laughs) uh, and doing briefings Mm -hmm. and stuff. Uh, and then a shitty overhead shooting segment through the away team. And then like a fairly shitty dog fighting section. 
uh, is the rest of it. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of the centerpiece. And a thing, a thing that I think would make this like really pop, like in back of the box or magazine screenshots, um, is that, uh, you know, you are on the bridge, uh, in between these other game types, right? So you yes. kind of rotate around and you get this rotating view of the different stations on the bridge and these really just big sprite, high detail versions of your favorite uh, next generation characters. Uh, they at their, oh yeah, like this is a, when you're on the bridge, this is a really good looking game. Yeah, uh, only can, then though. Yeah. <laughs> everybody <laughs> walks on the away team, everybody walks like Robobo. <laughs> <laughs> Why is walk? He's got to take a dump. Um, yeah, everyone is like yeah. kind of holding, like squeezing it in. And you can you can make a sprite as detailed as you, as you want, as long as you don't have to animate it. So yeah, then, it, it, <laughs> very different skills. Yeah, uh, on the bridge, being able to like check in on these different stations mm-hmm. and stuff gives this like a feeling of being a very free yeah. game uh, when it's not. It's real procedural. And that's what was, like, yeah, absolutely. Like I was 14, you know, when this came out, rented it a bunch, uh, because I love Star Trek, um, and was very confused by it, but that was what kept me coming back. Yeah. Was yeah. this like idea of being like, Oh, I like a, an enterprise simulator is mm-hmm. what I wanted Yeah, with like a procedural, you know, a, a galaxy full of quests that I could stumble upon, not a linear game that has the flavor of a simulator. Yes. To it a little bit. Yeah, no, it's like uh, I can see the, the the illusion being really strong, right? Yes, that yeah. that to me I think would be the big selling point, especially if I was a fan of the series. Also, it feels like a like a like a pretty mature game, actually. You know, yeah. like, and if I was if I was fourteen and I rolled up to this thinking like, oh yeah, this is kind of sophisticated. Like this feels you know, a little bit like the, you know, an episode of the show that deals with these, you know, high handed concepts and all of that, uh, bouncing back and forth and doing enterprise bridge type stuff, um, uh, would feel, you know, that would loom kind of larger in my mind than the crappy mini games. Right. Just like, yes. Oh yes. You know, it kind of doesn't, doesn't matter that the away team is just a, you know, a really, really bad top down shooter. Because I'm doing, you know, I'm, 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 I'm the captain, baby. I'm, I'm Picard. Yeah. It's a, it, it does a good job of that. Yeah. You know, and the, uh, the weirdly, the Game Boy port of this game kind of is closer to the thing that I wanted. Oh yeah. Uh, which I didn't know at the time I was just doing research on this, but is like Picard giving you semi random missions that you go in and achieve Mm -hmm. through managing uh, the bridge or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, of your enterprise um when you say this is mature uh that is the thing that uh, i wanted to make hay out of in this was just uh i'm coming to this realization of exactly uh how like adult contemporary and bland uh (laughs) the next generation is despite how much i love it (laughs) um and i was having the realization uh or had the realization nobody on the next generation is cool not one motherfucker on this thing is cool (laughs) It's everyone is so it is like the most grown up set of grown ups. Yeah, yeah. That I've ever been. Like Worf the badass warrior. Uh-huh. Every time they come to me, he's just kind of like, well, I, I don't know about that. That's not how we do it. <laughs> and then nothing happens. Uh-huh. Like there's no conflict. It, I've been watching I like I've been thinking about this while I'm watching Better Call Saul, which is a show with drama uh-huh. and uh conflict. Uh-huh. Uh which this show only kind of has. A little bit. A lot, of, a lot of friends being gentle <laughs> with each other and everyone just being like real stiff and weird. Yeah. Uh, I mean, every, I mean, everybody is u- universally shitting on, on, on Wesley though. So. Oh yeah. Wes- Wesley sucks more than most of them. <laughs> right. So you know, I mean, but, it, but <laughs> Wesley, it, Wesley is the Jerry if there's a, if there's a parks and rec, uh, kind of, yeah. uh, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, it's, it's a way that I think that Star Trek next generation is really ahead of its time with me Uh because now I really love that lack of razzle dazzle. Yeah. Like the blandness that, you know, we'll have to see about protocol, you know, uh, exciting protocol action and stuff in Mm -hmm. this show. Uh, is very exciting to me and the dorky stodgy pace is incredible i know i've talked about that before no i just i've been thinking about it a lot because i I mean it's it's it's, it's great it's one of those things you know i i you know i have not seen very much star trek the next generation most of what i have is cultural osmosis 
you know, mm-hmm. like I've seen stuff and I like know the characters and, uh, and things. I've also never seen a lot of the original series, but like from afar, my respect for it has been a the, you know, kind of genuine utopia that is built around it. But also yes. the fact that like what I understand of the best episodes is that it like the space stuff kind of goes away to a certain degree and it becomes like a really tense submarine movie, you know? Yeah. Uh, kind, of, kind of thing where like there is like international intrigue and it is these very competent people in a situation with limited uh kind of information about what's going on trying very hard not to turn uh you know a, ca- a powder keg into a flashpoint right it it's that but not nearly as well as that gets doubled down on deep space nine right right you know it's that but not really serialized mm-hmm so there's like elements of that at its best, but a lot of times it's just monster of the week. Like, uh, here's here's a virus that turns us into children. Yeah, you know, just random nonsense. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's a that's at its best though. The utopianism is real. Yes, uh, that is a very sweet thing. It's a very progressive show. Yeah, no, uh, in there. Even though in this, you just go down and just shoot Romulans <laughs> yeah. over and over. You're, you're in the you're in the neutral zone. So if you see a Romulan, it shoot on sight. Yeah. yeah, they got to go. <laughs> I love how the game ended up being like the criticism of this at the time is that it's slow paced and boring. <laughs> um, it is. It's so of Star Trek. Yeah, it's kind of like it's kinda like uh, what, what did you expect? Like this isn't Star Wars. This is not supposed to be like a, a Kurosawa adaptation. Yeah. Right. Yeah, <laughs> it's 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 the the most it's so stolid. Uh, I just love it. And I love uh, how many stories there were of uh, Data. You know, the robot man, mm-hmm. um, there'd be a whole like D or E plot of data, like getting into cro- crocheting or something. Uh huh. And then all of his friends, every time just kind of like, all right, show us your crocheting. And then he would do it and he would crochet something like perfectly, but very bland. And then they'd be like, Ugh. <laughs> everyone just rolling their eyes and pretending to go to sleep and stuff. Yeah. Like, and it just kept happening. <laughs> it's so fucking weird. Yeah. Oh, I love it it's, so much. It's like, why, why are you guys constantly dunking on this fucking biotechnological miracle that is happening yeah. right here in front of you? Like, it should be a joy. Like, he's trying to be a real boy. He just wants to be a real boy so bad. And they hate it. Everybody, Riker and Worf sighing whenever they see some of Data trying to do something. Uh, and everybody getting exasperated trying to explain uh, things to him. I mean, Data is uh, tedious, right? But, like, only marginally more tedious than everybody else? That's the thing. Like, <laughs> yeah. I think that Data would really, like, Spock stood out uh-huh. on Star Trek because everybody was this hot-blooded maniac <laughs> on that. Here, everyone's a Data. Like it, Riker's maybe 10% less data. Uh huh. Like he gets to go down to the planet of ladies and have sex with them. Right. Right. But he's, he's still a real stodgy dork. Mm hmm. You know, it's all stodgy dorks. Yeah. Not so much. That's really good. The, uh, what would you do? Uh, let's say, uh, you get a holodeck. What are you doing in that holodeck, man? <sighs> I don't know, honestly. Uh, because, Time passes. Okay, again, I'm revealing my ignorance here. Time passes regularly, regularly outside of the holodeck, right? Yes, it is not a time thing. It's it's hard light illusions. Hard basically. light illusions. You know, I, I I don't know if that's actually what it is. That's what it is in um, the danger room. Yeah, and they're very similar. Okay, but but it's you know it's not magical. It is you are in you you know you're just in this thing that can simulate locations and people and stuff. Yes, uh, but, but it's not just VR. Like you can touch things. Yes, in the holodeck, and you can move around. Like it, it uh, you know, I guess the floor moves can, around, so you can, can walk in place. I know that there are episodes where it becomes real, and Riker gets it with paternity suits. But um, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, sometimes and a lot of times uh, in the show, they only go to Earth media that we would understand as an audience. Right, that's in the public domain. Yeah, so so, so you get it, Picard, uh, you know, like just leaning on um, Patrick Stewart being a Shakespearean actor. Picard putting himself into uh, Othello or whatever, right? There's there's a little bit of that. It's mostly going back to fight Moriarty, okay, from Sherlock Holmes, or mm-hmm. to go back and be Robin Hoods. Yes, uh, and then sometimes Picard also likes being a detective. Like a hard boiled detective. Those yeah. are the three main things that people do on the show. But <laughs> I, I don't let that limit you. Because yeah. those are the, again the blandest fantasies ever. 
Yeah, I I I, uh, I do I do like Picard. Uh, be just just loving to play pretend. Oh, it's so it's so it's fucking cute as hell. <laughs> I don't know how anybody does anything else. That's the thing, right? I mean, yeah. kind of like in Shadowrun. I don't you know I don't understand how anybody is not uh semi Kimmy, right? Just uh, yeah, doing BTLs BTL all addict. the time. Yeah, um, literally it, better than life. Put me <laughs> in the joy can. Yeah, I, I mean, I think Picard has the right idea. Like, uh, like treat it like VR. Treat it treat it like games. You know put yourself like in really intricate like puzzle solving escape room kind of stuff load up mm. you know whatever the equivalent of like a dnd uh kind of thing is especially if it can't hurt you you know or well, like the, mortally those, wound uh, you yeah the safety protocols on the holodeck are turned off about half the time <laughs> well there's your problem it feels like <laughs> yeah it's, it's a it's it's not meant to to be able to hurt you but i'd say about half the times it shows up it can okay so they're still working the bugs out of the holodeck I mean, um, I can I can ride a uh, a car uh, with a seatbelt on. You know, true. I, I often choose like uh, a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, how about you, Smarty Pants? What would you do? Oh, I uh, probably pretend to be in Robin Hood. No, I don't know. <laughs> uh, the, the, like, uh, if I had one now, I might pretend to be on Star Trek. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, just for irony. Um, if I were on the enterprise, I always get the sense that like everyone there really hates their job and they have to work all the time. Right. Yeah. So it's really hard, uh, to get holodeck time and mm-hmm. like you had to book it Yeah. and stuff. Um, I'd probably do D and D or I would play, uh, you know, I want to say like video game stuff, but too many video games I like, uh, involve being athletic in a way that I can't. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't want it. Like the second I'm trying to do an immersive sim in the holodeck and I have to actually physically mantle something. Yeah. Hoist yourself I got up. One of those would be about once a day, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but that's, but that, that's the thing. Like I could see the holodeck actually being a fun way to like, you know, learn, learn a skill. Right. You know, yeah, even sure. if it, even if it's just uh, something as simple as like, okay, this is a nature walk and I'm going to like take this, you know, take this book and try and identify plants or something like that. Or I'm going to go, yeah. you know, like go, you t- go along. I've done this stuff in VR too, but it's like, I'll just basically use this as like educational tour kind of stuff. Like I'll do yeah. the VR, like go to Chernobyl thing, right. Or the, the Anne Frank that, house. Yeah. That would be really great. Yeah. I would do the Anne Frank experience yeah. on the uh, the holodeck. I'm kind of surprised that they never got stuck in that. Like Moriarty <laughs> not got st- I don't stuck. Think that in, would, I don't think that would get past the network. The, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, or or like uh, making instruments. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, it'd be really cool to like play a glass harmonica. Mm-hmm. You know, without having to set it up. Uh, a lot of people talk about sex on the holodeck, but here's the thing. When you turn that holodeck off, the cum just falls on the ground, I think. <laughs> right? They've got polymers. There are coats where you can just uh, mop that up. It's not going to streak. Yeah, I don't think that it would be hard to clean up. And they could make, you know, somebody has to clean up the Enterprise anyway. Yeah. Like, there's got to be, like, a, a spooge mopper mm-hmm. for the holodeck. Uh, but I, I would be embarrassed about leaving my seed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know. You know. Just clean up after yourself. It's campsite rules. Leave it better than you found it. Yeah, that would be the way to do it. <laughs> yeah. I just, it, it, the idea of like, you know, similar to like what I talked about flashlight, like you get done with it and then you immediately have a disgusting and urgent chore. Yeah. You know, being like right after I've just recently had sex on a holodeck and been like, oh yeah, holodeck end program. And then just like, you know, it just falls <laughs> down is really unappealing to me. And the end, like, okay, fuck, I had to go get the squeegee. Yeah. You know, it's, it's the, it's the, pre, the, the pre-production and the post-production that always trips you up. Yes. Yeah. I would, uh, so I think that I would probably stick to normal masturbation if I were on, to answer your question, Yeah, normal masturbation if I were on the Enterprise. Ah, I don't know though. I'm pretty, you know, I, I, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't swing too far out of the norm, uh, you know, or vanilla. Uh, what's the right way to say this? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if I, I could see if somebody had, let's say, a physically implausible uh, fetish, something like that, the mm-hmm. holodeck would, sure. would giantism, be, uh, yeah, giant would, Troy dot <laughs> mpreg, <laughs> dot, dot mpreg, yeah, <laughs> yeah, dot mpreg, Loxwana, x Ferengi mpreg, yeah, <laughs> dot giant, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. But if they, you know, if anybody had a uh, had a physically implausible kink, it'd be fun. To, it'd be fun to uh, to indulge in that. You know, yeah, good for them. Yeah, 
Yeah. The uh, the other thing about I like about Star Trek is that uh, it's a really profoundly unhorny show. Yes. Like I mean, tell, I, uh, I, I mean, yeah. The, there there is Kirk. You know, we have to reckon with Kirk, right? I specifically when I say Star Trek, I just mean next generation yeah, stuff. Yeah. Like Kirk is an unrepentant horn dog. Yes. You know, and Riker gets laid in the show, Star Trek the Next Generation, but the show itself is just like very like not horny about it. Except no. when it gets horny and then it becomes the horniest thing in the world. Like if uh, I know you haven't seen this show, but you know Troy, uh, you know who that is? Yeah, a Watch counselor, Troy, she's yeah. an empath. Yeah. Yes. She has a mom. So she's very uh, kind of stodgy, and she's the hottie on the show, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Marina Sertz. Uh, she has a mom named Loxwana who shows up, who is like a horny elemental okay, and wants to fuck every man on the Enterprise. Like, those episodes just turn into her, like, running her hand up Picard's leg and him getting increasingly, like, uncomfortable and beat-faced. <laughs> Uh, it's really good and weird. Like you just have this show that's like about people walking down hallways to completion uh-huh. and doing diplomacy. And then just like horny aunt, like the, the, the alien God's own wine aunt shows up to try to seduce Patrick Stewart who cannot handle it. Uh, and then hit on Riker. And like, when she finds out her daughter's having sex with Riker and she's like, Oh yeah, good job, daughter. Like ride that, ride that fucking cowboy. <laughs> it's just like, everyone's like, ah, uh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what do we do? She's just here from a different show. It sounds like it, it's 100%. Yeah. And it, it was full of those guest stars. Like Q would come in and turn everything into like this mincing riddle. <laughs> uh, it's, I love it so much. Uh, huh. So good. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just, uh, I, I, like, I feel a little bit ashamed that I'm just not, I don't have as much catalog on Next Generation. It's just one of those things where, like, it, you know, it, Next Generation was kind of in its heyday when I was a little bit too young to appreciate it, right? I think our age difference yeah. really accounts for a lot of that. Um, when, you know, when it was airing concurrently and it came on, it was not, it was not razzle dazzle enough for me, but like, you yes. know, if it was 1995, I was eight and also I was fascinated with Star Wars. You know, because yeah. that because that was getting the the the, the re releases and stuff right there. I'm not making a direct comparison. It's just you know for for that age, for my age, and at that time, that's just kind of what I naturally naturally gravitated towards. And then by the time it hit Netflix or streaming services, then it was just a it was you know it's like the Buffy problem uh, to a certain degree. There's just a lot of this, and it would it, like it's getting it would be getting to know too many new new characters. You know, well, so. it's, it's a long series too. It's yes. not like saying like, Hey, watch all five seasons of breaking bad. Right. Like it's all seven seasons of star Trek, but each season is like 25 or 30 episodes. Yeah. It's the old you seasons. Know? Yeah. Old thing. Yeah. I think uh, also when I put this on the schedule and was just thinking about this game, I'd forgotten that you did not have next generation cache. No, it's fine. Uh, you know the, uh, but I, th- I think that that is illustrative. Like the star Trek, star Wars thing is ultimately about razzle dazzle. Yeah. Like the, the gulf between those two things is whether you want, you know, over the top kind of action and, and lasers and stuff, whether that's what you want, Mm -hmm. you know, and that is, that is maintained into the, you know, the movies and stuff like that. Like Star Trek, the motion picture, the first one is one of the most boring movies I've ever seen in my entire life. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Uh, It's incredible. Yeah. Uh, You know, and you compare it with, with Star Wars, which is meant to be very exciting, Mm -hmm. big orchestral score, you know. The, we, we enter our story partway in progress. Here's the drama. Yes. You know, versus like, boy, space would, you know, space would be peaceful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Space would be pretty peaceful, except for this one guy. His name's Khan. Makes big problems yeah. for us. He's, he's yeah. mad. <laughs> but luckily, we got rid of that guy. Yeah. You know, now it, it's just about uh, what if we go to a place and there's some kind of weird game? <laughs> you know? <laughs> Yeah, and I and I I have not kept track of like the like the modern uh you know just the discovery or genesis or whatever oh, yeah. the you know, new stuff yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. I don't uh, I don't have very much interest. I think it's weird that they uh with next generation you know they have all those characters, they all age, but Brent Brent Spiner Data really wants to come back for mm-hmm. all that stuff, but you can't like Brent Spiner's aged a lot. Yeah. Uh, and data looks real weird and puffy now, uh, not to like age shame Brent <laughs> no. Spiner, but he does not look like an ageless Android. He's like a Chuck E. Cheese animatronic. Yeah. 
left out to pasture, <laughs> like just <laughs> the natural ravages of age that happen to a person. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's a that, that, that's a real uh, that's a bad break, is what we would call that yeah. in pool. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's a it's it's a shame that the person most enthusiastic about it got the one role where it would be implausible. Well, he still comes back. He just looks yeah. like a. a gross makeup monster they're they're doing uh peewee's big holiday uh kind of stuff on yes. them. yeah 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 it's it's grody mm. looking uh data on that show if you didn't know this he has an off switch i believe uh, i've yeah, guess, i've seen the guess off where switch it's at. uh say so, well oh, you've seen the off switch no no so so i guess i don't because like i i know that he has an off switch because like that's a joke just like hey we need to turn him off um uh i, I don't know let's say taint there's one you can you can do it by opening his brain Okay. Which some people do. There's also like a button between his shoulder blades. <laughs> it feels like sometimes people just push on him there. It's like where it turns uh, off. It kind of seems like that would be hit all the time by like, I don't know, yeah. the backs of chairs. Yeah. And, and chairs or like taking it, like laying down for a moment. Like, ah, I, be- I guess he doesn't have to lay down, but he could be like, I believe, uh, you know, I shall pretend to see what these humans call a nap yeah. and then like lays down and just immediately reboots himself. Yeah. He gets a cat at one point too. Me and Liv were trying to figure out where he gets the cat from. <laughs> like there's a subplot of him getting a cat named Spot, who's a very good cat. Uh, mm-hmm. The cat in question probably long dead by now. It's very sad. Mm-hmm. Uh, and him trying to learn what it's like to be a pet, o- pet owner, you mm-hmm. know, in his ongoing quest. But like, where do you get a cat on the Enterprise? Like, is it through the replicator? <laughs> is that like a clone cat? And the if re- so, that opens up a lot of yeah. Questions. There, there, there are. Uh, uh, can the replicator make a living thing? It can make organic material. <laughs> right? There's a distinction between those, Gary. <laughs> no, I know, but I'm saying it's not as big a distinction between, you know, a 3D printer and... Is there another machine you can put the organic material in to give it a soul? <laughs> I think that the, this show raises those kind of questions. Yeah. Does not have a soul? <laughs> you know, a little varmint. <laughs> I, I just I don't know where a spot came from. I need to I need to rewatch the whole series because all those little questions are now like keeping me up at night in a literal sense. Like yeah, you know, been a long time in bed trying to figure out where spot came from. <laughs> uh, <laughs> without googling it, I, I remember I remember watching it. You know, again, it would come on when I was real young, and uh, I, I recognized Lavar Burton from um, Reading Rainbow. You know, where he just sure. a big part of my childhood. Right, we would watch it in yeah. school. It was fun when it came out on uh, PBS or whatever. Beautiful and, name. Like, yeah. So, oh, oh, yeah. Just a uh, uh, just a uh, c- continues to this day. Um, and you know, I thought like, oh, he's got that cool visor. That's neat. But like that character, it, it, it kind of felt like he wasn't allowed to be Lavar Burton through that. You know, hmm. to a degree. Well, everyone's got that mute filter on him. Yeah. You know, he gets a couple like storylines. At one point, he makes a holodeck version of the person who invented the ship and falls in love with her. Okay. Uh, and, uh, then the actual person who invented the ship shows up. Uh Oh, uh, and that's awkward. And rightfully is like, Hey, don't create robot versions of me to fall in love with. Yeah. Fucking weirdo. Ethical, um, problem. Jordy. Yeah. Come on. It's pretty messed up. So that's the other thing about a holodeck is like, if you don't don't (laughs) want to end up in a her situation. No. Yeah. That would be, that would be a problem. Well, that's why, that's why you don't give your creations a face. Yeah. Whatever uh, horrible sex doll you've made in the holodeck, (laughs) uh, it should just have, it should be like one of the, uh, the, the, the beginner's guide things. Just a cube that says sex (laughs) instead of a head. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> where do i where where do i oh it's on the bottom yeah of course there we go. It is. all right uh, <laughs> this is sad they also uh another thing on star trek i was just thinking about a lot is there's this guy named barkley who shows up on there who's uh-huh. a, a character uh matt frewer played by a character actor you'd recognize yeah yeah um, Tra- trash game man from uh, the 90s stand yeah yeah uh he uh he goes uh crazy at some point gets like superpowers like a flower for algernon thing okay uh so there's a couple plots with them up until that point though it's like the one guy who is depressed and sucks on the enterprise okay like everyone's just like this guy's fucking pathetic and he's real sad and nobody like helps him in a meaningful way (laughs) they just kind of like treat him like shit (laughs) uh it's it's incredible as well (laughs) even with even with troy there like (laughs) troy does counseling sessions with him but in my memory she's real fed up with him Oh, like there's a lot of scenes of her just being like, 
okay, Barkley, we'll see each other next week. It's a little, uh, it's a, it's a little, uh, oh, oh gosh. Uh, oh, who's the, who's the pastor on the Simpsons? Reverend, it's Reverend Lovejoy, uh, yes. with Flanders. Listen, yeah. lady. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I think that they call him, uh, Broccoli to tease him. <laughs> How weird and quaint is that? Come on. Broccoli. <laughs> Broccoli. <laughs> and I'm like, what, what tiny kid's conception of, the future what an edgeless limp <laughs> <laughs> depiction of this this could ever be huh. yeah. yeah just would imagine a future where everybody's lame yep uh, i love it i love a lame future <laughs> yeah it's so good the uh um i would do D in the holodeck mm-hmm. uh replicator that'd I mean, be great oh, oh i would love to just be able to choose a food and just say it and then the food appears mm-hmm. you know uh, and then, uh, I don't like the bar. I think it's weird that there's one bartender and mm-hmm. there's one bar on this entire ship. It's a big ship. And everyone has to hang out there. It is a big ship. Like, yeah, I find that very strange. Yeah. Huh. Uh, you can talk to Whoopi Goldberg if you're there though. <laughs> is she the bartender? Yeah. Huh. Guinan. She's also, uh, an ancient alien race that has some kind of relationship to the Q's. Huh. Yeah. Okay. So the, 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 are they, uh, are they not, not, not rivals because obviously that's Picard, but like, does she, does she get wrapped up in trying to stop Q whenever the ship has cues? Uh, if the ship had cues and, uh, Whoopi Goldberg happened to be available. Okay. Sometimes. Yeah. Well, a lot of times she just ignores whatever's happening. Hmm. Like she's got a bar to run. So Q will be up there fucking everything up. Uh, okay. uh, or there'll be some virus or something, and Guinan just isn't involved. Gotcha. So. Huh. But yeah, she's not for Q. Uh, yeah. And um, the show never got into where they had Lady Q or Baby Q. <laughs> the, uh, it didn't the run Q long children. enough for Baby Q to pop up. <laughs> yeah, Baby Q did not. That's a later development. I think Baby Q might show up in Voyager. <laughs> but I know Baby Q shows up in the novels. Does it really? Yeah. You said that like a joke, yeah. but I've got no idea what's a joke and what's not. Oh, no, no. Baby Q's real. <laughs> uh, there's a, there's a novel that me and uh, my my assistant listened to when I used to work at NIU. Uh-huh. IQ <laughs> was the name of the novel about huh. Picard, Q, and Data going to planets that represent the five stages of grief <laughs> as he's on the run from his wife and daughter, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like Q goes to family court. <laughs> like, well, I mean, that's that's how where villains go. That's where villains are made. <laughs> yeah, it's the the uh, full, full circle. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, uh, mm-hmm. I I don't want this episode to go forever. But you know what I would do on a uh, on hmm. on a holodeck? What's that? Falconry. Yeah, you do that in real life, man. <laughs> I did it in real life. It's fun. I like to do more of it. Why don't you just go do more of it in real life? Well, it's costly. Oh. <laughs> well, I, uh, oh, that seems expensive. <laughs> well, it's a perk. <laughs> like, are they? Are they? Do, do they? Pay, do they pay for it? Do they pay? Yeah, there's no coin slot. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you know. But yeah, I, I imagine it is a perk. I imagine it's like part of their benefits. Yeah, I mean, it seems like it'd be an important part of morale, right? Yeah, I'd be. Yeah, getting a certain amount of shore leave. <laughs> yeah, uh, without it, without it being actual people, which is a little bleak. Yeah. Do we, we haven't talked about your falconry. We have not. Yeah, that was a good, good transition. And I forgot about your falconry. Yeah, no, 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 that's fine. That's fine. Uh, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I, I pe- pe- people, people want to know, uh, this was a, mm-hmm. uh, this was a uh, birthday gift, uh, an early birthday gift that, uh, and combined Christmas as well. Cause again, it was, it was, it was costly, but Chris, uh, you know, n- knowing my fondness for birds and particularly birds of prey, it was like, oh, this will be a good experience for you. So this was down in, um, it was down in a suburb of Columbus kind of in this mm-hmm. big uh in this big forest park where the Ohio School of Falconry uh has set up and it was like a a three and a half four hour session where we got to meet uh, just a ton of birds of prey uh and well i mean i, I can i can just i uh, do, do the do this in order we got it um you know just like just talking about like oh the history of this and you know breaking off into groups to like answer the question like when did falconry start and where you know it was it was ancient japan okay. is, the, is the is the earliest uh is the earliest known uh mention of you know, proper falconry using falcons to hunt 
Uh, and that's what it is. You know, it is hunting. It is not just, uh, you know, you know, the, the, the high of telling a bird what to do. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Commanding the bird. You don't control the birds maybe someday, but yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, uh, but then we got to see like, there, there were a couple that we couldn't see, like I, I couldn't hold the peregrine Falcon, but like I got to wear the glove, you know, I, mm. e- each one of us got to wear the falconry glove. The big, the the, the yeah. big thick one, and uh, like we got a chance to. I met I met an owl was uh, was the first bird that we got to hold because it was uh, it was use uh, it was used to people like it was a rescue that was raised by the uh, the instructor's daughter. Um, this is okay. it was it was a Eurasian eagle owl. Uh, go ahead and look those up. It's one of the biggest owls, but it was only five pounds. Called Henson because he looks like a muppet. Okay. <laughs> and just God, the claws on this thing. Uh, just, uh, just right there and completely cool just to sit on your hand. As long as you held him up above your shoulder. What happened if you lowered him below your shoulder? Uh, he would feel insecure and he would like put his wings out. <laughs> you would start a blog. <laughs> <laughs> if you real anonymous, just <laughs> uh, he'd, he'd, uh, he'd feel insecure and go on Tumblr. <laughs> <laughs> no, he put his wings out and it'd be a whole big thing. You'd have to you'd, yeah. like either raise it up because it just, if it's, if it's down like that, he feels like he's falling, I guess. Yeah. That uh, makes sense. So it, it, it was, an, <laughs> there was only one kid there, which is weird. Um, uh, uh, most of the people were either like around my age or like older. There were like several people who were like 50 or 60, you know? Okay. Um, That's inc- a luxury thing. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. but, but, uh, including a whole, uh, a whole cast of birders, uh, who, who were there, uh, who had come from all over. Um, like there was one person there from like as far away as like Minnesota, uh, which mm. was weird um apparently there's a, there's there, there's a thing uh there's like a meme in bird circles are you on team hawk or team bunny okay are you on just basically like <laughs> are you predator or are you prey is this like the the it's wolves a, it's, devouring sheep party from death loop kinda i mean it's it's like which do you have more sympathy for like do you think it rules that a hawk will uh will, will kill a bunny or are you sad that a bunny will die <laughs> Which huh. I don't, which I don't understand, but it like, it was, it was really like they, they was talking about just like, Oh, like, what are you on? Are you team Hawk or team bunny? And the, and the, the cast of birders, these, the, these very excellent middle-aged women, they were split, you know? That's, that's fascinating. That, that seems like that's a real way to get into some like real wretched, you know, eugenics shit. Yeah. A little almost, bit, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, I don't like, I don't care for that. No, no. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I suppose I just don't want to think about it. I, I mean, uh, also like it. Ki- uh, I, I'm of the opinion that it doesn't matter what I think. Hawks, hawks gonna eat a hawks. Gonna, hawks gonna eat a rabbit because hawks gotta yeah. live. A lot of rabbits are gonna yeah, get away, it, not get got. They're gonna have kids. It's kind of like yeah. I don't know. It's, and it, then rabbits are gonna in turn hunt plants. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> the trees feel pain, yes, but in a way that which, is very which, which hard to carry. Plants will hunt the sun. Like it, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> and then they'll go hunt up some water. Like, yeah, it's just a circle, you know. It, it was just a really weird thing to um to be uh to imagine somebody being concerned about, you know. Yeah. Like, why would you? <laughs> like, if I if I see a bunny, else I, I will look at it and think, I I really I really hope that a hawk doesn't come down and get this get this good that boy. specific bunny. Yeah, that specific bunny because I made friends with it. <laughs> yeah, but but bunny uh, hawks eating bunnies in general is abstract. Yeah, it's like um, food at like a restaurant. You don't want to know too much about it, right? Right. I, I don't yeah. want I don't want them to come up and do the Portlandia thing of telling me its name. You know, I don't yeah. want to go see the no, farm. No. Yeah, yeah. I never eaten anything that I know the name of <laughs> uh, in terms of like food. Yeah, like I've never been like this chicken is John, and then like that chicken gets slaughtered, and I eat that chicken later. Right. I've never picked out a lobster. Like I wouldn't do that. No, no. I just yeah. uh, I, have you stopped eating hawk after this? <laughs> Gary, come on. <laughs> I, I got to live my life, okay? Yeah, I'm not trying to be judgy. I would no one to blame you if, you, if you're still eating owl. So. Uh, <laughs> oh, my gosh. They're just the, They got those meaty claws, dude. You just got to pickle, yeah, yeah. p- pickle those bad boys yeah, crack up. crack them open like a lobster claw. <laughs> uh, I, I'm just looking at my notes here. Did you know that uh, uh, people who raise hawks, oftentimes they will be uh, called on. Hawks are a part of the wedding industry. Um, oh, okay. There are wedding ring delivery hawks. 
Ooh, they don't just scalp in laws. <laughs> like, <laughs> if they're threatened, they don't just kill the caterer before the bill comes. <laughs> <laughs> you have to pay extra for that, so it's kind of a wash. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so they can deliver a wedding ring, eh? Yeah, they can deliver a wedding ring, and like, so the the, the coolest part, you know, we went and walked out in the woods along a along a path, and we had uh, there were two Harris hawks which are these really smart hawks who hunt in packs. Uh, the one who we spent the most time with was Irwin. And uh, then there was his sister, Raby. Um, okay. uh, not rabies, like the disease, but R E I B I. Um, and um, like, what was really neat is like, when you go, w- like w- when you go falconing, uh, they kind of follow you around like cats to a degree. Okay. Like in, in your house, when you go like from your bedroom to your living room, the cats will probably just kind of like lounge you know, like follow you, like I'm going to just hang out here because I just want to be around you as you're walking, yeah. walking around. They're not like on a leash or anything, and they're not always on your arm until you send them out. What they're doing is uh, you're walking and they are either following behind you or ahead of you down the path, like going from perch to perch looking for prey. Right. Okay. And so it's, it's us. And it was real cool. Just like to walk through this woods and then just follow this hawk that was in turn following us. Uh, jumping from like uh, 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 place to place and we would reach a clearing and the, 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 the instructor had just this bag of chick parts of, you know, of like baby, 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 baby chicks. Uh, and we would hold up the glove and he would put the, uh, uh, put the little snack up on, up on our glove. And then he'd whistle and then the hawk would fly down and a light on your take, take, take the little giblet and a light on your hand. And it would be like, honestly, a pretty magical feeling. If I'm being honest, you're a goddamn beast master when this thing flies down from the sky and lands right on your hand. Yeah. I imagine that being pretty cool. Yeah. And then also you, you get to, to pet them. You do right? not, you do not get to pet them. You do not touch a bird. Oh yeah. Oh, I, I'm no longer interested in doing this. <laughs> so that, that 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 that's that's a thing. Um, the the the, the, the guy, the, the instructor, kept on saying, like, yes, they are bonded to you, but that's because they, you know, they're they're bonded to their keepers, but that's because they trust that you are associated with food and that you will not take their food, right? Okay. Yeah, you, you, like a big part of the of the of the falconry training is. You know, just uh, like they will hunt something and they will grab something uh, and then you offer them your own meat in return to like grab it, you know, okay. and you take that in turn and that becomes a, a treat for later. Yeah. So you, you can switch them. Yeah, you bait and switch them. Um, yeah. But like just to maybe made it very clear. These birds will not love you like a bird cannot because that is just not the relationship they had with their parents. Right. Their relationship with their parents was not necessarily for comfort. It was for food. Whereas, like with mammals, you know, when you have a cat, uh, the, they are mimicking their relationship with their parent with you, right? So, yeah. you know, you don't touch a bird on its body because that is either associated as a threat or as uh, sexual, you know? Okay. Uh, some birds you can, like, touch on their head, you know? Like, that's fine uh, if you're willing to risk uh, getting getting beaked, you know? Uh, and if you try and touch their uh, touch their claws, they were very clear. Do not touch the claws because they will associate that with prey and they'll grab onto you. Uh, and, you know, these claws are strong enough to, you know, crack skulls open. So huh. may, maybe a bad and idea. And you've chosen to, to hitch your wagon to this loveless monster? Yes. <laughs> these horrible critters that cannot love you and will Be- not? Because they're, because they're majestic. <laughs> that, that is some real simp behavior to like... <laughs> Go all in for majesty like that, man. I am, I am white knighting the majesty. <laughs> birds, like, I didn't realize birds were incapable of love. That's some <laughs> some Patrick Bateman shit. I don't know that I can get down with that. They're incapable of love as we understand it, you know? Yeah. It's like a plant. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a plant that does cool nature shit, you know? Yeah. I could see you watching one of those from a distance. The fact that I cannot be friends with these things... Uh, has legitimately put a little bit of a damper, but it's mutual. I mean, like, in like, so, Falcony. like, I, I, I should say it is. It is mutual trust. They will follow you. Like, they want to be around you. Like Everlast. 
<laughs> or Uncle Cracker, rather. Yeah. He's the, he's the one who will follow you. <laughs> no, he wants you to follow him because everything will be oh, all right. Shit. He's the yeah. opposite of a bird. <laughs> yeah. It's, but, but you know, like it is that they, they will they will opt to be around you and they will follow you through the woods and stuff. Like, I, I again, I cannot I, I cannot say how cool that is, you know. Yeah. And um, I, <laughs> I, I can I mean, I guess I can see it. I just yeah. I, I like being friends with animals. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. like uh, it's it, it's it's the kind of tr- it's the kind of like relationship or trust like how your cat will like sleep around you because they trust you, right? In the wild, a cat, you know, an animal would never would never fall asleep if it didn't know you because you might present a, a you know a danger. And yeah. you know, with 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 the hawk, they will I mean, so when the walk was over and we were walking back, we had these two hawks and uh I got to carry um uh I got to carry Irwin uh, back to the, mm-hmm. uh, back to the pavilion. Um, and he was just kind of there and I was, you know, it was this, you know, semi long walk down this trail holding this, uh, you know, hawk on my, on my arm. And it was like having this pretty intense, like bonding kind of experience, looking at him look around, you know, and like just locking eyes with this thing and saying, what's going on in there? Basically kind of yeah. like, kind of like forest with the bearded dragon and review. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the uh, the weird thing is that like a lot of times with that stuff, uh, I was talking about this with um, or Jeremy or Will recently with horses. Yeah, where you're like, what's going on in there? And it feels like it feels so close to nothing. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, and, and it makes it kind of scary. Like I I've watched a falconry demonstration. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm playing up my dismissal of your falconry I know. jokes. <laughs> yeah, I. I genuinely would be interested in this stuff, obviously, because yeah. I'm also a nature dork. Mm-hmm. Um, but with that, looking into the eye stuff, that will chill me to the bone sometimes, <laughs> yeah. like in a weird way that very few things will. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like I can imagine having a bird on my arm, looking into its eyes and just being like, I can't, this is an alien being. Yeah. In like a very real sense. Yeah. Uh, like I cannot understand how this thing conceives. I, I, I have those moments. Like I had, like I, God, one time I stepped out of my house, like to go get in my car to go to work. This was in Cincinnati. So kind of in the middle of the city and out behind my house, I thought somebody had put a, uh, um, like a, like a decoy deer, you know? Okay. Uh, like, like similar times will be, no, it was a real ass buck. It was a, it was a buck, oh. uh, that was just standing in my, in my backyard of the, of the house that I, that, 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 I, that I rented a floor of. Um, and I just stood there looking at it then just like there was this yeah and looking in the eyes okay which one of us is going to go are you going to trample me or are you going to stomp on my car and no it yeah. just it jumped over the back fence but like anytime i get one of those one of those kind of kind of kind of things where you lock eyes and try and see inside of it it kind of gives a little bit more context for humanity to me you know yeah <laughs> it's yeah. like yeah yeah i can see that by seeing something uh, else or by projecting my own into it yeah Yes. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. Like it. It's a. It's real weird. It's a very uh, humbling and uh, right sizing experience. Yeah. You know. No, so. but but I can't. I can't recommend it enough. And I learned about a whole bunch of um uh like bird sanctuary uh kind of things that have similar places. So I'm very curious uh to go and uh, check some of those. Check some more out uh this uh the you know this spring. Um. Yeah. It looks. Uh. It looks awesome. Yeah. Like uh, I would. I would. I would love that. Yeah. Uh, that is, I will look around. We have a, an Audubon society around here that I have, uh, done. Uh, and that's real fun. Yeah. You get to see some birds. You don't get to hold them, no. but you do get to see them, <laughs> you know? And also and, like, uh, it's a, it's kind of a, you know, because it is so ancient, you know, going by thousands and thousands of years, like it's, um, one of those like, oh yeah, like this is older than a lot of forms of ways that people got food that I might know of. Like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah so it's, it's legitimate historical value as well yeah so it's uh it's, it's just one of those things where like yeah now it's mostly done for uh you know for entertainment right like it's a it's it's a leisure activity it's a it's a it's, it's a luxury activity but it is one of those things you know kind of like shooting a bow and arrow where like it's kind of in a way this weird communing with the past kind of thing just the chain of history mm-hmm. reaching back kind of deal. I don't know. This was a good experience. It's making me feel like all philosophical when I talk about it, which I understand is not appealing, but yeah. no, no, I get it. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, yeah. It, it, I mean, it should, right? Like it's a, it's literally a, uh, horizon broadening thing. Yes. 
you know, in, in a literal sense. That is the appeal of something like this, mm -hmm. is broadening your horizons. Yeah. Making you think in different ways. I did ask, like, how many people come here to, uh, like, do an immersion therapy, like, uh, um, address their fears kind of thing. Apparently not a common, sure. not common. Um, yeah. Because it didn't say it doesn't yeah. happen, but, like, it's just, it's not something I kind of expected, half expected that to be the thing. But, no, everybody, yeah. everybody was into it because of the same just dorky. <laughs> I also remarked about this to Chris as I was leaving. Like, how can something feel so cool but also be the dorkiest thing in the goddamn world? It did. Yeah, it, I mean, it's, it is very dorky, <laughs> you know, but it, but in a way like in a Star Trek way. Yeah. Did, uh, did Chris enjoy it? So Chris didn't uh, stick around. Uh, he, he dropped, oh. he dropped me off. He came, he came for the, for the tail end, but kind of like stayed away. Um, uh, just because he didn't want to get, uh, get free. Uh, it's, uh, it was, it's one of those things where like they used to only charge for, uh, participants, and viewers, you know, people who are just observing could come in for free just to learn, but people were abusing that. It would be like six people and they would pay for one, they, they would pay for one participant, but they would swap out. And it's like, oh, geez. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a real, real, real dick move uh, to try and scam that blah. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, uh, you don't have to win every encounter you have no. with, uh, with life yeah. uh, and get the cheapest price for anything. Some things, uh, you know. Didn't pay for the thing. Yeah. Like don't uh, take, don't you know, take advantage of this incredibly earnest, like staff of people who are here because they want to share this knowledge. If, uh, if you think, if you think it's cool enough to go do, you think it's interesting. If it's interesting, you should support it. You know? Yeah. Um, also, uh, if you like the show, you can go to patreon.com slash TV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And another thing. <laughs> and another thing. <laughs> another thing. <laughs> um, yeah. But I mean, I, I legitimately agree with that. Yeah. Like you, uh, do you know, you like something, you support it. Mm. Uh, so if you like us, please support us. If you mm -hmm. can, it's okay. Don't read too much into this, but in general, yeah, no, no. don't need to try to scam your way out of us. No. Um, the, uh, you know, you can do that at patreon.com slash duck feed TV. Uh, you can also become a patron, mm -hmm. uh, there and support us and suggest episodes and get bonus episodes and all that jazz. We're recording for a little while. Uh, a yeah, little brain blasted here. But yeah. You know what to do. You listen to podcasts. <laughs> yes, you have. Um, uh, yeah, you get bonus content, uh, leave ratings or reviews. You, you you know the deal. Go make friends with the bird. Uh, would be yeah. uh, would, would you be go my to Patreon. You can leave. You can leave a rating or review. Tell your friends. Just get stuck in this loop. <laughs> <Or it's> just, <laughs> you know what to do. You know what to do. Uh, you know. Tell your friends. Talk about us on social media. You know what to do. Um, <laughs> Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was uh, I, I was pulling up the uh, the the thread with the uh, with the with the end uh, with with with, with oh. the outro uh, kind of deal. Uh, we we also we we lost a little bit of audio there, so we had to. We had yeah, to yeah, we, we got something. some technical times. It's time for grandpas to go to bed. Like, yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, until next time, swap feet picks with interested parties. Thank you.